I've been wanting to do a Q&A video for a while now because I feel like most of you guys that watch my videos are a lot like me, you know, we're nerds. Not lame. But we spend a ton of time playing video games and watching YouTube videos, a lot of time on the internet in general. And since my recent success on YouTube, I feel like I haven't got to like talk about my YouTube journey or really even talk about me because I'm always talking about the video game in the video. And you guys ask a lot of really good questions and things that I would want to know when I was starting out as a YouTuber or just as a adolescent slash growing adult slash just general person on earth that also is into gaming and nerd culture stuff. And I apologize in advance if this video is me stuttering through answers and stuff like that. It's, uh, I, I haven't written anything for this, so expect the worst, uh, but hopefully you can take something out of it. I think this is a great question to start the video on, which is the number one likes comment on my YouTube post, uh, which I thought I was gonna get like 50 questions and you guys asked 583 VMs. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more than I was expecting. Roland Pataki, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, asks, if you could talk a little bit about why you started making videos and how it all started, that would be great. I love the content you create and I'd like to hear it from your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I've been watching YouTube since I was like, 12 years old, I think, or something like that. Starting with things like Good Mythical Morning and Greatest Freak Out Ever, <laughs> like randomly. <laughs> things like Node and Corridor Digital. And there's been multiple times in my life where I've tried to make videos. Today is a great day for video games, holy cow. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know, you know, it seems like I've been making videos for a short time since I think my first video on this channel is like just a couple years old. But there was times before that where I got really into people like Casey Neistat and tried to do vlogging with a friend. And then I got into Twitch a lot, you know, I started watching people like Dr. Disrespect, started Twitch streaming myself and would make these incredibly <laughs> embarrassing videos about me up, playing a game as like a character or in like some sort of Hood. Oh, man, it's so cringy to think about. <laughs> I bought way too much Yoda stuff. But that's where I really did start to learn how to like talk in front of a camera, especially when you're Twitch streaming to zero people for like 38 days straight. I say like 38 days straight. I did not have a viewer for 38 days when I started Twitch streaming when I was like 17. I've always been a big talker and really opinionated about things that I watch or play like with video games and TV shows and movies and all that kind of stuff. And I've always really been into comedy, really been into comedy. I don't consider myself a comedian here on YouTube. I, I really try to be informative first, then entertaining. But I knew if I was going to do something on YouTube, I would want to in infuse humor into it. But those Twitch streams, which were, you know, sometimes like five hours long or something like that, I would take those and cut them up and then post them on my YouTube channel. That had no effect. Ah! <laughs> Where they would get, you know, four views. <laughs> but it really taught me how to start editing video. And even though I wasn't that funny in the moment while making the video, I could make it way more funny if I used those editing powers. Did I just call it powers? My God. And then I started watching videos from people like H3H3 and Cody Co that were really like speaking these truths about internet society and stuff like that. Like I remember Cody Co had a video about talking about all these like influencer travel vloggers and like how all their posts made it seem like every day of their life was a freaking dream and everybody that was consuming their content was just like, my life sucks and it's boring. Let's look at the comments. This makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> Yep. And you know, H3H3's videos before the whatever the podcast is now. You guys want to try this? Was all about like calling out BS stuff like pranksters and stuff. I just loved how it was always like, I felt like they were saying the thing that I was thinking. And they were hilarious. I. I really wanted to make videos that were more about my nerdy side. Well, actually for a while, I didn't know what I wanted to make videos on. And eventually I came across somebody like Nakey Jakey, where I got to see somebody combine video games, humor, creativity, all these things that I was so attracted to and do them in such a mesmerizing way where I was like, all right, I have got to start doing that. And by that time, I had been watching YouTube for over 10 years. I was 24 or something like that. And I finally decided to give YouTube one more shot and start making videos. So I started making a video on an iPad review. 
which I don't know why I did that, but I needed to make something and nobody was gonna watch it, which is great. Now people have watched it, which is embarrassing. But I noticed that this time around while making videos, I actually felt like I was saying something that I meant. One of my first videos is on Animal Crossing, which I, I just kind of talked about how as great as it is, as fun as it is, I just feel like it's kind of just this pointless little game now. And I'm not sure if it's a, like as an adult or what is it. And I wanted to explore that idea of like, why do I struggle with playing Animal Crossing now? It's probably because I'm 24. <laughs> And then I made a video on Hunt Showdown, which was like this unsung hero of a game. And then a video on Doom, because I just loved it so much. I loved how brutal it was. And every video I made, I found I was getting better. I could raise a little bit more money to add some more budget into a video. And I could keep on getting better and better. And watching people on YouTube that were influencing me and making me better, but also trying to maintain my own voice in my videos. And I feel like every video, I've learned something or I've gotten better in some way. The, the thing that was weird was one of my first videos that ever got attention was my Risk of Rain video and it got a thousand views after like a month and I was like blown away. I was, it was the coolest feeling because it was so cool to see one of these videos that I spent so much time and effort in like get this recognition over something that I loved making. That's that's really where it felt like the difference between this pipe dream and then finding my calling in YouTube stuff. Once I started making these videos, I just kind of couldn't stop. Like I just wanted to keep making these videos. It's such a great creative output. There's so much that goes into videos, whether it's writing or graphic design on text and stuff like that and, and adding in all these edits and, and effects and filming the video performance. Like it, it, there's so much that goes into it and there's so much that you can get better at. I, I just kind of fell in love with making the videos, whether people were watching it or not. And then the Red Dead Redemption video happened and uh, changed my life. It was insane. Then I had an audience to bounce off of and talk to you guys. And it's been like ab absurd uh, since then. <laughs> like, it's just crazy when I upload a video now and within like two minutes, it has a thousand views. It's the coolest feeling ever. I never take it for granted. It's always the best. My videos don't need to hit millions of views all the time. Like it, it's so cool that you guys show up like pretty much regardless. And I love that. So thank you. And that is question one <laughs> down. <laughs> what was the game that made you realize you really loved video games? I'd have to say Super Smash Bros. Melee or Melee or however I incorrectly say it in most of my videos, because that game was the first game that I actually experienced joy out of my competitive side. Because I've always been like mediocre at the sports I played in real life, but when I could beat my five year older than me brother in Super Smash Bros. Melee, I felt melee. I felt like I was on top of the world. And that competitiveness has not left me till this day. Like I still love getting into different types of game genres and becoming the best at them, whether it's a, a MOBA or an FPS or a battle royale. That game really made me like fall in love with games. Paint me like you do your Sheila's. All right, asks, what in your opinion is one of the most underrated games out there? Conversely, which one to you is overrated? I almost don't want to answer the overrated because I'm immediately saying like, hey, that game that everybody loves, it sucks. <laughs> Oh yeah, I gotta give my underrated to Hunt Showdown. It's such an excellent game, amazing graphics, amazing gameplay, the environments, it's it's a beautiful game, it's scary, it's always fun with friends. Totally recommend that game. Shane asks, what's something you didn't expect from the growth of your channel? Um, this is kind of a weird one. I did not expect how nice you guys are in the comments which is like the coolest thing ever. I love that even in my videos where I'm like talking crap about Red Dead Online or something like that, it's like most of you guys' comments are just so kind. <laughs> um, I'm not crying, I just think I got a hair in my face. You guys are just really kind and supportive and I don't know what, what I'm doing that's causing the community to be that way, but I love that the people that are in my videos and in my comments are so genuinely nice uh, and it's something I do not take for granted. You guys are literally the best audience ever and I do not say that lightly. Bulge Wizard, all right, asks, what's some of your favorite moments whilst playing video games? Ones that have been emotionally powerful, ones that have burnt into your brain, also you're awesome, thank you. 
I gotta say, like, one of my favorite moments playing video games was in The Last of Us. Watching that initial first 10 minute sequence of uh, the beginning of the game was just unbelievable. It was better acting and writing and set up than most most movies that I've ever seen. I think about that scene all the time and I've rewatched it like a jillion times as well. And next, we're gonna go through my Instagram, which I really feel like most of it's gonna be my friends trashing me for being an egotistical maniac that asked, uh, hey, what do you guys wanna know about me? All right, here we go. Will Arn, where do you see yourself in five years? That is something that I literally recently said to somebody and I was like, before YouTube, I had a clue, and now I have no idea. Why won't you respond to my text? Okay, yeah. What's my favorite TV show? Game of Thrones by a long shot. And some people say like seasons one through five were good. And I'm like, yeah, definitely. They were the best. But then they like discount season six and seven, which were like freaking just as good. I don't like, I understand people's complaints about season eight. Season six and seven were still awesome. And then they also bash D and B, the the showrunners of the show, and it's like, hey guys, they also made seven seasons of amazing television that will last forever. Like just because they flub season eight doesn't mean they're terrible producers of shows. I don't know. Uh, who do you think you are? Who who do you who do you think you are? Oh, this is a great question. Noah Irvine fourteen asks if you could collab with any YouTuber, who would it be and why? One hundred percent, the goat himself, Nakey Jakey. And then right after that, Tanner Savar asked, what was your main inspiration for starting your YouTube channel? And I think those go hand in hand. It was people like Nikki Jakey and Drew Gooden and Cody Ko. These guys that really showed me how to like present yourself on YouTube. I watch a ton of YouTubers that, that are from different genres, whether it's like tech channels like MKBHD or people like Good Mythical Morning, Rhett and Link. I've also been watching YouTube for so damn long that it's like, I've always wanted to do YouTube, but I never wanted to copy somebody else. So like, I remember when I first wanted to make content on YouTube, I, I wanted to immediately involve like a green screen and be like so creative. And then I found Nakey Jakey's channel. I was like, well, that's definitely his thing. <laughs> and it's awesome and so creative and he's so funny. And at one point in his video, he mentioned that he wrote his scripts and I'm like, okay, I'm definitely gonna write my stuff because the first few of my videos were non-scripted and I was clueless going into it. And it made videos really hard to make. And, and seeing somebody who I thought was so funny and off the cuff, knowing that he wrote his videos, I'm like, all right, that gave me permission to be creative on the page and uh, take it to the video. Is that pretentious? Zafnir asks, what did you do as a job before YouTube or still do if YouTube isn't your main income source? Great question. I've been wanting to like make this more clear, especially on my YouTube channel. Um, I still work a nine to five. I've been working pretty much right out of high school as a graphic designer professionally. Uh, I didn't go to college, not bragging. But you just learn so much stuff in the graphic design field. It actually is surprisingly interesting and it teaches you a lot about like honing your creative eye. I, I still have so much to learn in the field, but uh, now I'm uh, a senior graphic designer and people at my job know about the whole YouTube thing. So it's, it's all good that I'm talking about it right now, but yeah, eventually I do want to become a full-time YouTuber and be able to give you guys more videos than, you know, once or twice a month. I want to be able to give like three a month, but it's pretty hard when, you know, you're working a full time during the day, you close your laptop and then open it right back up at the end of the day, just working on YouTube stuff again. Even though I use a tower computer, come on, I'm not using a laptop to edit these videos. Where am I from? Well, I was born in Minnesota, then I moved to Wisconsin, then I moved to Florida, then I moved to Pennsylvania, then I moved to Florida again before I got out of high school, and then I moved to Chicago, worked there professionally, then moved back to Florida, and I now live in Jacksonville, Florida, which is pretty much my hometown. As much as I wanna keep answering questions on Instagram, which by the way, follow me on Instagram, at Jack Sather. I post like kind of updates to making my videos a lot there, but I really wanna get into the meat of this video, which is the YouTube comments on my YouTube post. Eric S, is there any hope left to save money hungry franchises that have gone downhill like Ubisoft, EA, and Rockstar? Or have you given up hope of them making a good original game? Good question. I've thought about it a lot recently. We're doomed. No, uh, <laughs> I still have hope in Rockstar. I still have Beth hope in Bethesda games. Ubisoft and EA are tough. By the way, there's plenty of wrongdoings that Rockstar has done in Bethesda. 
as far as their games that they've released and the attention to it. But this, at the same time, like things like Rockstar, it's like they're pretty much just Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead. Those are both amazing games. If their next IP sucks, that will really say something about the whole leadership change and the whole money that they've acquired and where that's gone. But companies like Ubisoft, it's it's just been really rare when we get something that's actually good. It, it's 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 all just like big budget mediocrity, and I and I really don't like that. Every now and then they have a cool innovative new title. Like I really liked For Honor, but I also just hate that like uh, For Honor this gritty medieval night game or whatever that's so badass turns into like ooh we all have particle effects of flowers growing off of us and fire helmets and all this kind of stuff it's like why did you make it like super saiyan mode we were we, we were super badass knights and samurai and all this kind of stuff and now we're it's like adventure time like what are we doing and ea is a whole nother beast they make so many games in so many different genres i hate that EA is connected to Battlefield, and Battlefield is maybe my favorite first-person shooter game, and it's, it's, I mean, it's like, it's done. It, and, and I've even played it recently, and given it another shot, it's done. Daz, how do you find topics? Just games you've played with your friends recently slash recommendations? What's the process for creating your videos? Been watching you for a while, keep it up, and hopefully, thanks for answering. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I have a notes app on my phone. Uh, I actually have this for multiple things in my life, but I abuse my notes. Anytime I have a, a an idea for a video, I write it down regardless of how good or bad it is. And then coming back to it later, I'll kind of see if it has any you know footing as far as like what's going on in the video game world. I, I usually like like to think about what's the what's the differentiating thing about this video game when I'm playing it, and then make a video on that. Like it's like Outer Wilds, that video is like kind of about its amazing mystery and, and its game mechanic there where it's the whole game is based off of player curiosity fueling your progression. Like there's no violence or anything like that, it's just curiosity. When I was playing Elden Ring, I had heard so much about the Dark Souls franchise and like how much people were just obsessed about those games and I really wanted to explore that and also give credit to it while at the same time exploring Elder Scrolls as a complete newcomer to Dark Souls. I think that was a an interesting angle. Instead of just being like, Elder Scrolls is an 8 out of 10. Why? Because it was too hard and I take off two points for that. Ralph Iger Ralph asks, Hello there, Jack. I got a few questions prepared for you. What was your motivation to start a YouTube channel? How long does it take for you to make such good videos? Have you considered making a VOD channel? What are your top three games? What, in your opinion... All right, all right, come on, man. You're getting a little greedy. I'll, I'll answer the how long does it take for you to make such good videos. Thank you, by the way. There's there's a lot that goes into a video. Uh, I personally write my videos. Sometimes I go a little more improv-ish, but most of the time it's, it's written and I retake most lines over and over and over again. I do go word for word a lot, uh, and I write how I talk. So it's not weird that I'm saying the exact words, even like and, you know, dude. So I write, I film, I edit, and then I upload. Editing is the beast. There's a lot that goes into the editing part. I would say the other parts can take like 10 to 20 hours total, and then the editing part can be like 30 to 40 to 50 to 60. It, it's, I really don't even know. I remember making my Ubisoft video, that one took an ungodly amount of time. Like I think I have like, 200 something clips that I are saved in the folder when I made that video and that I was just constantly pulling things into. And then on top of that, I use Adobe Premiere, which I'm no longer using. I'm making this video in DaVinci. Jack, you are not using Premiere. Use DaVinci. No longer am I using Adobe. No longer. Premiere. I use it everything else because they have a monopoly on the creative industry. Hamder Hippian, if you can make your own video game, what would it what would it be like? Open world or more linear? What mechanics would be in it? Keep up, great work, man. I think I could speak for all of us when I say that your videos are always instant classics. Ham, my man, thank you. This is something that I would really like to explore. I have, I think, a really good idea about how to explore that question. So stay tuned for that. I don't want to spoil anything, but. I think that's something I want to cover in future videos. Norweed asks, what was the hardest thing when you started your career as a YouTuber and what advice can you give to those who started or are planning to start their YouTube career? You know, it is hard to make 
a video that you spent 30 hours on and then it get 40 views and it's after you texted 40 of your closest friends and family <laughs> to watch the video and convince them to watch it for you. I even remember when I was making my Red Dead Online video, I think the last eight videos before I uploaded that video, every video had max 300 views. It was, it was, it was pretty hard to not get any like sort of uh, viewers past like a thousand views and put, be putting so much time into it. Nobody was watching my videos in the beginning and that allowed me to make mistakes. Uh, I actually like all my videos. I, I don't really have like a, a lot of cringe when I watch my stuff, thankfully. Uh, if I watch my old stuff from when I was like 17 in on my personal computer, that gets embarrassing fast. But what I kind of liked about starting with barely any viewers is you have full permission to screw up and fail and full permission to even try to be like the favorite people that you watch. Like you shouldn't do it forever, but you can take a lot of inspiration and make stuff that you would find to be entertaining. Like that that's like one of my biggest goals even now is like I want to make videos that I would want to watch. And on that note, if you're starting a YouTube channel, pay attention to what you are spending the most time watching and try to make that. And you don't really need to start with anything crazy. I started making vlogs on my iPhone when I when Casey Neistat was really big. He inspired the heck out of me to just like put myself on camera and try to make a story out of me walking around Jacksonville, Florida in a day, which was not that entertaining. It was like a video of a fucking river. It was boring as hell. But it was one of the first times that I actually got to explore the medium of video and kickstarted it to what I'm doing now. I've been making videos for six years or something like that, like, and mainly just experimenting with the medium. I, I haven't really posted a lot of stuff that, I, that I've made. I have a video about me eating, I, I really liked hot ones, I, and so I was like, Oh, I could do that. And in the the bit of the video is going to be I forgot to get chicken wings, but I got a bunch of hot sauces, so I have to use something else and I use marshmallows. And I just made that video and halfway through making it I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> this is terrible. Well, that's good. And this was as disgusting as it sounds. But again, it was experimenting. And I was a dumb person before the age of 21. I still am pretty dumb, but I feel like in the past Five years is when I've been able to put my thoughts together. I've started writing my videos and realizing, wow, if you spend time analyzing your thoughts and, and condensing them down into valuable information over and over again, it, it's just like writing stand up. It's like you can tell a joke that's a hundred words in 10 words and it's just as effective. And doing that with every point in a video is surprisingly really fun. I sucked in school, by the way. I never thought that the guy that has procrastinated so much in high school, I, I always was the person writing the essay three hours before the class started. Now I'm spending my free time writing 20 plus page <laughs> like video essays about the economy in Red Dead Online. Like, I don't know what changed, but it's something that I actually love doing now and I can't help but do. I will say, if you're gonna make videos, open yourself up to criticism. Ask your friends why the video was good or bad or where did it get boring or whatever. I, I really think this helped me a lot. Somebody told me in the beginning of making videos, because I used to start a lot of my videos with like a, basically like a 45 second to a minute long compilation to a cool music track that I, had and somebody was like, I start the video and I think that the whole video is gonna be gameplay compilations, which I don't wanna watch. And I miss the fact that you do you put all this effort into like getting dressed up and making a cool video. Like my death loop video had a one minute long gameplay compilation and I cut that shit out as soon as my friend told me that and immediately well nothing really happened, but it, it makes it such a more immediately engaging video rather than something that I thought was cool but wasn't the right moment for the game. Video for the video. So anybody that's starting a YouTube channel or watching this or watching YouTubers that they love and they feel like they wanna do what they do, try doing what they do and let yourself fail. So you can try again and maybe next time it won't suck as much. Liquid to Fire asks, your art on your Instagram and also in a couple vids is incredible. Could you tell us a little bit background on how you got into it and your favorite types of things to draw? Rooting for you, buddy. You've got exceptional talent and I hope you reach your goals and aspirations, which I'm sure you will. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, so uh, I've been drawing since I was like five years old. I love drawing, I do it all the time in my free time, even now, uh, most of my free time is spent doing YouTube stuff. But yeah, my mom is an interior designer and was an artist. My oldest brother, Peter, I have three brothers. My oldest brother, Peter, is, is a insanely good graphic designer. Um, he also started as a uh, an illustrator, which kind of inspired me to kind of follow his path. I literally did like the exact same thing. I was an illustrator. If he was drawing portraits, I was drawing portraits. If he was doing graphic design, I started doing graphic design and uh, and then ended up doing it professionally. And he now does it professionally. He's insanely good. I recommend him. This is his Instagram if you guys want to see his stuff. At some point while illustrating, I started discovering people that were doing um, concept art for video games and that became the coolest thing in the world to me. And I wanted to do that for years, but then I realized to be a successful concept artist, you have to be the best artist in the world. <laughs> you have to know everything. There, You have to know everything about knowing every piece of anatomy, knowing how to make creative ideas, monsters, creatures, environments. There's so many things that you gotta think of. You gotta study cars, you gotta study houses, architecture, types of painting, drawing, maybe you do a little bit of 3D, some sculpting, shadows, lighting, everything. There's so much that goes into being a really good concept artist. And uh, eventually I was like, I think YouTube sounds easier. <laughs> no, eventually I, I just, I was working as a graphic designer. I, I still had aspirations to become a uh, concept artist, but I didn't go to school for it. And I felt like I was a little too far behind. So uh, I picked up just different hobbies and I'm always like learning some different stuff. Like I'm learning DaVinci Resolve for this video. Joey the Joey, would you ever make a video going through the history of a specific video game series? I think that it could fit your content style very much. Yeah, that's a great idea for a video. Um, yep, Simple E Modern asks a very interesting question. Is it only gaming? Oh, man, it is. Do you apply your meticulous and detailed analysis and experimenting process of reviewing a game or product for anything else you're passionate about on the side? Like, do you put this much detail into maybe a sneaker collection on the side or a collectible toy item, etc.? I would say I do. And that is, uh, it's related to the YouTube stuff, uh, which is, I love my gaming setup. It's the best. And it's something that's so cool is like over the years you find out what you like and dislike, what you need. And recently I just made one of the biggest purchases I've ever made on tech and that was my 49 inch ultra wide monitor. And it's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life. And just experimenting with making a really functional fluid system. Like having my mic that swings over and I can do videos and my Twitch stream and my lightings that are just right here, plug in, nice and easy. I have my wireless keyboard, wireless mouse. I have cable management that looks really smooth. My computer is silent as a mouse. And there was many years where I dealt with annoying PC issues because I didn't have enough money to fix the dang thing. And it's just nice. I just love making things better. I also do have a sneaker collection, but that's not important. <laughs> I think this is a good question to end on. Killian Hanan asks, I started watching your videos a little bit after you uploaded the Red Dead Online video. You were pretty small back then, but you have grown a big following. How does it feel to grow so quickly in less than a year? Love your stuff, keep it up. It's uh, literally like, I've talked about this with so many of my friends and stuff like that. It's like, it's not my dream job. Uh, YouTube is my dream job. It's my dream. <laughs> like it is, the thing I love doing, I love doing it in my free time. I would love to do it as a career. I love communicating with you guys, my now audience, which I didn't have before. And it's like the coolest thing to have. I've been really wanting to make this video specifically because I want to encourage people that are thinking about doing YouTube, do it. You'll learn so much about humor, about pacing, about writing and, and effective communication. And that sounds even lame when I say it that way, but I really do encourage anybody that's watching my videos and being like, how could I ever make a video like that? Trust me, you can start making videos right now and you'll be blown away at what you could learn with just Googling how to do certain things like how to make an explosion graphic. Like it's just little green screen elements. You just do a little screen blend mode. It's the easiest thing in the world. Pay attention to what you're watching and start making stuff like them. And you can make amazing content for people to, to view and you can really brighten somebody's day. I know that sounds corny. 
you know, when people say like that, it, it makes their day that they they gotta see one of my new videos, or whatever. It's like it's it's one of the best feelings, knowing that you're lightening somebody's load in life, and maybe adding to a perspective that they thought they were alone on, or something like that. It's 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 the best. I love YouTube so much. I thank every single one of you for watching my content. Seriously, you're the best, and um, and thanks for being nice all the time. It's it's really great. And feel free to critique me on a bunch of shit too. <laughs> yeah, if I'm making crap, tell me. Yeah, you've changed my life. It's 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 amazing. So, thank you, and uh, I'll see you later. So a big thing I wanted to mention was, Andrew, you back home? Good. Yeah, okay. Ugh, damn it, I was like just about to finish too, man. <laughs> yeah, just don't listen to me. I will say the hardest thing about making videos is when uh, you live with a roommate and they come home and you're in the middle of recording a video and you get really insecure about everything you're saying, especially when it's any sort of advice. <laughs>